I wraps in with your financial market wrap up and this is for Monday the 7th of October 2019. You know right now we're just after 4 30 and just before 4 p.m. the president finished up his press conference and there's a lot to talk about. He was talking about the signing today of the Japanese trade deal. Very good. He's talking about the possibility of making a deal of some type with China. Trade talks begin again Thursday and Friday. But I don't think there can be a high bar on that because the Chinese have already said they're not willing to discuss at this meeting industry or subsidies. Well, industry probably takes in intellectual property. What they have been doing is buying a heck of a lot of soybeans. The president said they've been buying pork. I'm not seeing it. And I looked for that before I did this. I'm, I'm probably wrong if he said it, but I can't find where those pork purchases are. And hog futures closed the limit down today. That's the most that can fall in one day. The next thing is, you know, we all saw over the weekend the U.S. pulling out of Syria. And this is all financial wrap-up, so that's what I'm talking about. So I'm watching the news conference, and I'm figuring to myself we must have 500, 5,000 soldiers, probably 500 or so. And then he said, we have 50 soldiers there, and this is what the deal is, and we're turning our back on people. 50, 5 -oh. I don't know what that means either. I'm, I have to admit, I get confused, and we probably all do. But as we look at the market today, the market was fighting for direction a good part of the day. I was watching as the market was coming up, and I thought, sell orders are probably going to come in. Now that you've broken hard today, are we set up for a Tuesday reversal back to the upside? I don't know that either. Metal markets, while this is how much they're down in the last trades of the day, gold was down about $5, $6 more than that. Silver probably down another six, seven cents from there. So let's take a look at where we're at. First off, on a weekly chart, so far we're still staying under the 18-week moving average of closes. Now let's go to where the market finished on Friday. Friday, the market finished at 29.51, just under that 18-week average by 0.7. So you're extending that break a little bit. Okay, we can certainly see the market has got a lot of resistance between 30.24 and the last settlement. These are just settlements, the highest settlements of 30.13.60. All right, that makes sense too. When we look at how the chart came, we were rallying back into this resistance area. We ran into a bit of today a bump in the road. If we look at the pattern, the pattern has been lower highs and lower lows. That has been bearish. The market has been trying to find, and today it did it. I want to show you this rally. Pretty important. As the market broke down, the 100-day moving average did nothing. The market slid through it like it was butter. This was Wednesday. The market extended the break on Thursday. I was hopeful it hit the 200-day average because I'd been on TV saying, you keep your eye on that 200-day average. I think that just like it did back here, it's going to offer a first level of support. Well, of course, things never work the way that you want. The market goes back up, challenges, and settles over the 100-day average, and today, right back literally to it. So what wasn't important on the way down has turned into a bit of resistance on the way up. Seems to me that we've got a resistance point between 29.31.75 and the 18-day average of closes, let's call it 29.74. In terms of Bollinger Bands, you had gotten under last week. Here's the lower Bollinger Bands. You sliced under it. Here's that 100-day average, slid under it, went for the 200-day, and immediately back into the Bollinger Band, and today staying within it. So if you were to ask me on the break where might support show up, maybe the 100-day down to the lower Bollinger Band. Then I look at momentum. Now you've got more confusion. You have momentum pointing up, as you can see, the red line, which is the K lines over the D, so the shorter term number that makes up the slow stochastic. Think of them mentally as moving averages, crisscrossing back and forth. That number's pointing up. That's friendly. You're under the 18-day average of closes on a settlement. That's bearish, and the swing line is down. So as I'm going to define it, the trend is down. You've hit a big downside objective back at the lower Bollinger Band about four days ago. You've bounced, and now the question is, does the market want to make a run for it? But you have divergence. You have momentum up and the other parts down. As I come to the NASDAQ, I have the same identical problem. Now, when you're coming up 
in a market, one of the things you'll hear me often say is you're always looking to see where the 18-day average of closes is. It's your line in the sand. If you're up big, it's not uncommon to fall back to that number, fight a battle, and then decide what to do. If you're down, fighting your battle. So here we go down, and here's the market coming up, and obviously I'm looking to see how does that 18-day average do, and you tell me. I mean, that's what I call right on the money. The 18-day average was 77.9910. The market hit 77.9975 and finished at 77.12. I think the pros might have been selling that number, buying back at the 18-day average of closes for in and out trades. Again, there's divergence here. You've got momentum up, bias down, trend down, and you're fighting a battle suddenly at that 18-day average. In the Dow, you tell me where you're fighting. Look at Friday, look at today. Now obviously, just like in the NASDAQ, if the market were to rally, I'm looking for the resistance at the 18-day average. Suddenly, this 100-day average has gathered itself as a bit of support, along with the 26,133 lower Bollinger Band. And like the other indices, I have divergence. I have stochastic momentum up, bias down, trend down. In the Russell, this market's been in a downtrend. One word, downtrend. All of a sudden, though, the market on Friday stuck its head up and started getting divergence. You're pointing momentum up. Market's getting a bounce, as you can see. There's a heck of a lot of resistance right here between the 200-day average and the gray. The green's the 100 and the 18. Now, what could turn this market really long-term bearish in moving average theory? is getting that 18-day average under all of these and then getting the 100-day average to cross back under the gray line. That would be, you'll hear uh, chartists talk about it, they're probably beginning to talk about the word golden crosses and so on. You go look it up on the internet what it means. In the VIX, I'd look for support to come in on this break, 16.17, the 18-day average to the 100-day at 16.13. You're getting whipsaws back and forth, but the 18-day got over for the moment, the 100-day. That's a bit friendly. Divergence, momentum pointing down. Trend up with higher lows, higher highs. I think the pros, as I mentioned earlier, so went short here, but I think they got scared out last week. You still haven't hit any of the key averages. In the bond market, this is what I call resistance. You're up at the upper Bollinger Band. Are you trending? You're not. You have a lower low, higher high pattern. You're overbought, but overbought can lend itself to embedding. If you embed, it means lower interest rates, which means the futures go higher, they're inversion market. The resistance, you're back into this zone here. So does the market go down under that one, four, five level in the, in the, in the uh, markets in the 10 year and carry with it the bonds? I don't know. If you look at the 10-year chart, you're back into that resistance area. I think you can see it crystal clear. And just like we saw in the bonds, you have a lower and low, higher high pattern. I think that what we're seeing right now is there seems to be some buying going on here without a trend. You have a vertical price rise, no question about that. You've fought a battle at the 18-day average of closes both here and in the bonds, and the market, while it's moved higher, has encountered serious resistance at the upper Bollinger Band. When we come to TLT, this is a cleaner chart in the sense that it has a trend. It has higher lows, higher highs. This has been cleaner. What about the slow stochastics? The others are working on embedding. It has both numbers today. Let me see if I can get this to work for us. Here we go. Both numbers today were over 80. On Friday, both numbers were over 80, and the, both numbers were over 80 on Thursday. Therefore, today, you made this market what we call embedded. And until the red line closes back under 80, which would then say price and the 18-day average are very possibly going to come back together, the resistance is, well, the, the idea isn't as long as you stay embedded, you're looking for support on breaks to possibly get back up to the Bollinger Band again. Unlike the futures market, you're not at these high levels that you were before. Futures are more, they're ahead of this market. Now we get to the dollar index and it gets super interesting here. The trend is up, that's number one. Higher lows, higher highs. 
it hit its upside target here and admittedly it carried higher and gave it all back in a thrust. Now the market is saying, okay, what next? The bulls are controlling the market because you've got the higher and low, you closed over the 18-day average, and momentum, which had been correcting, has flattened out here. What turns the market bearish, from a chartist point of view, is taking out 90.30, 98.30, I'm sorry. That would give you the potential of lower highs, lower lows, under the 18-day average of closes, and if momentum turned down, everything starts looking bleak on the chart. What number do the bulls that are in this market have to protect? To my opinion, they probably want to protect the 98.35 level and don't want it to get under there. That's just a guess, but that's what I'm seeing on the chart. Flip-flop euro currencies. The bears have to defend this position. And if this market gets over Friday's high, watch out. You could have higher lows, a higher high over the 18-day average. And if that kicks out, you suddenly are bullish this market, putting into play the possibility of the upper Bollinger Band. I'm not saying it'll happen, not happen. I'm not saying anything holds, but that is what I'm looking at. So what do the bears have to do? They have to defend the position right here against that 18-day average and not let this market get over 110.58. That seems to me the number that's uh, in play. In the British pound, I see a market that has a lot of confusion and there's so many unknowns. We're gonna hear from a Scottish court tomorrow on a Ben Act. And basically what Parliament's trying to do is say, okay, Mr. Johnson has said that uh, he's going to, by October 19th, if he can't get a trade deal done, he has to write a letter asking for an extension of the EU. What if he doesn't do it? You can be tied up in court. So this next act that I understand is gonna to happen tomorrow that the court will decide, can Parliament write the EU and ask for it in the heck with Mr. Johnson? I'm giving you the simplicity as I understand it. Again, I may be wrong on it. It's so confusing there. Remember, they don't have a written constitution. Trying to figure out half the things they do is hard. But in any case, you're under the 18-day average of closes. The swing line is up. The trend turns down if you take out 123.07, putting in the play not a far lower number, but it is 122.56. And if you rally from here, the resistance is pretty strong at the 18-day average of closes. In the Japanese yen, you have a market that had a breakthrough here, a vertical price rise that's pulling back, and while the market has stalled a bunch of times at this 100-day average, it's starting to give up a little ground. Can I call this a trend? No. I can say you have upside bias, momentum's trying to turn down, and you're over the 18-day average of closes. Bitcoin. Uh, I did an article today of a voice recording for TikTok, and my, my biggest problem with Bitcoin, in fact, all these cryptocurrencies, is other than a speculative vehicle, what are they? I understand blockchain, so don't write me about that. I'm talking about where can you use these cryptos. Today, PayPal dropped out of supporting the Libra concept from Facebook. Regulatory reasons. I just don't know if regulators ever want to give up the idea that you can buy these cryptocurrencies without, keyword, in quotes, without a way to track that you did that. Got it? Remember, they just went back on income taxes on people at the IRS. So I, I think that you can get more use if that can be it, but I think that the crypto people don't want to give that up. That's just my own opinion. In the Brent versus WTI crude, Brent picking up again against the WTI. And as we take a look at the Brent here, you came down last Thursday, hit the Bollinger Band for the first time, and you've had a heck of a bounce. It's a bounce. It's not a trend change as I'm yet reading it. The market is oversold. It's not embedding or trying to even do it. As you can see here, there's a resistance level between 61 to 6150, and you break this downtrend if you take out 6191. The question is, will the bears try to be aggressive in an oversold condition? They hold the upper hand right now. Now, it's not that way in WTI. This is an embedded reading. So that tells me that until the red line is lost on good rallies, the bears are showing up 
And you can see that at the end of the day today where the market gave up the, the gains intraday. I don't know if it's got the power to get back up there or not. That's going to be the interesting part. We get the API numbers tomorrow afternoon. I think that'll give us an idea. Gasoline negated its downtrend today. It got up high enough to break the pattern of lower highs, which it's had a, quite a while, and lower lows. It never did get to the lower Bollinger Band. It simply got itself oversold, and now we're in that corrective mode. It still has downside bias. It's oversold. I don't know if it'll get to that other number. And last in the nat gas, where you can see the market might start the embedding pattern. It's fallen apart hard from this rally that it had right back here. And the question is, until the cold weather really sets in, what do you do? Now in Chicago, we're getting cooler. The heaters are on already uh, because we're getting at night into the 40s and 50s, so they're coming on. Once the rest of the country starts using this, we'll start seeing possibly some reductions in supply. This and a lot more is available to you on our website. Now let me explain what I mean by all that because on our website we have free offers like this from Modern Trader. And if you go to www.irapstein.com you can get trading tips from the pros, you can get volumes one or two of technical indicators, our charting software, access to a whole host of events. So go to here, Look at free offers, give it a click. You can click up here if you're watching me on YouTube, it'll take you there. And I'm hoarse, long time talking today. You have a good day, I'll see you tomorrow.